Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the second edition of GLUD, Political Theatres of Civil Rights, a fortnightly online platform presenting political theatre from around the world, hosted by HowlRound Creative Theatre Commons and coordinated by Besna Theatre. My name is Nico Vokari. I am, a co I am Quartis Director and Co-Founder of Besna Theatre, a British-Romanian political theatre uh, collective committed to using theatre to investigate, expose and confront institutional and normalised violences. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Sitara Ha, The Stars, written and performed by Mandera Hashemi, directed by Leif Persson, music Mateus Perez and uh, costumes by Inga Halström Sinabom um, from Vesterno Theatre in Sweden. Thank you so much for your patience with our technical issues. We do apologize for the inconvenience. And starting from tomorrow, you will be able to watch the live stream and tonight's discussion without um, any interruptions on both HowlRounds and Besner's website. So welcome everyone to the panel discussion for the third event of Bloods, uh, the second edition. First, for tonight's discussion, we are joined by writer and performer of um, Sitaraha, amongst other works, Monira Hashemi, sociologist, philosopher and writer Asad Buddha, and London-based actor and activist Shala Nix. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, so Monira, I wanted to start um, um, uh, with you, a question. Um, could you tell us about the title of Sitaraha, The Stars, and what is, what is the meaning behind the, uh, the title? To investigate, expose, and institutional and normalized violences. Thank you so much for joining somebody, us. Somebody has the, uh, <laughs> the link open, thank you. Uh, in your own time, Monira, please. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Nico. Um, and I'm really happy and glad and... Uh, from uh, yeah, to be in this uh, festival. Um, I do apologize. The Stars is uh, the story of uh, many women which here in this, in this play have been portrayed. Um, sorry, I can hear this, this sound. Uh, can you please? Uh, Asad. It's, it's interrupting. Asad, can you take down the video because we can hear it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was my. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> yeah, okay. thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, Nico. Thank you from Besna Theater. Um, Setora the Stars is actually the story of, of many women, but here in this particular play have been portrayed through three. And that is Halima, Gulbegum, and Sara. And for me, actually, every story is a star. And no matter how hard we, the woman, try, I mean, we, the woman who are living in this religious, traditional, and patriarchal context and societies, to bring a kind of smallest change to our surroundings, to our society. But as long as we are ashamed of our experience, of, our, of what has happened to us, to our body, um, our surrounding is going to remain the same. And, and of course, that's going to be dark. In my belief, uh, I think we need to tell our stories and we need countless stories to somehow illuminate our surroundings. And it is true telling, uh, and I emphasize that, and it's true telling that we can understand the vastness of this darkness. And, and that is where the name Sitara Hale Stars is coming from. Um, yeah, that I can say about Sitara how they stars. And I think Asad also has some um, thought about it and I highlighted it if he wants to join me in this, but that's the idea behind Sitara how they stars, encouraging yeah. everyone to tell those stories. Um, Asad, is there anything you'd like to add to that uh, before we move on? Yeah, uh, first of all, I, I would like to Leif, who really directed this very strong play and the next play for Munira in Tandil Harduna, and maybe the third one also. So if we have this very strong narrative, very maybe sad narrative, it's because really Leif is a very, he, he really helped Munira and to produce this narrative. Uh, Sitaraha is, uh, as Munira told, it is, mostly based of woman tradition, which we call, me and Munira calling that Shahrzad tradition. It's based of one thousand and one night uh, stories. Uh, the main character is Shahrzad. Shahrzad is telling to be alive. So saying is, 
uh, a key of life. So here is in, in this uh, performance. So uh, it's, it's uh, written in framework of storytelling, which is very, very uh, common in country like Afghanistan that the spoken language is the most strongest part of the culture. But it's also uh, in this uh, specific performance, uh, Munira just focused on three uh, part of history, uh, 80, uh, 80, 90, uh, 80 uh, 92 to 93, uh, and also the uh, Mujahideen war in Afghanistan and when the Taliban came. So the main, the plot of this performance is uh, narration, narrating of three genocide based of woman body. So the main idea is when the, when the genocide happened, or maybe even something very bad thing happened in history. So what's happened to human, and what's happened to women, to children, and with what in by what kind of medium we can express. So Munira used here woman body as a medium to to tell something. Yeah. So that's and the name of start also come because our history is very dark and it's 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 very difficult to show what's really happened. It's difficult to show when 62 percentage of people are killed. So and then the name of stars come to to tell that yes the darkness is unlimited and infinity so we can just we can just put some stars in the very dark space but beyond between the stars there is many many darkness that we really cannot express maybe cannot understand. And also, I, I, if I just add something, it is true telling yes. that we can say that we as human, as women, we exist. If we cannot tell how, um, then we cannot exist also because we are not, our story, our narrative is not part of the society. Thank you. That was, that's, that's fantastic. And actually, we're going to move on to this idea later, but I, I think it highlights a very key um, theme of tonight's discussion, which is, about the important, if you look at it from an artistic point of view, a political theatre point of view, not just artistic, that this idea that stories or testimonies um, and parts of history that systems and people work towards mm -hmm. and work very hard to hide and eradicate from history, uh, the fact that the role of the political artist is to is to make sure that these stories aren't forgotten and just like the stars as you have beautifully put it shine through that tide of darkness that censorship or that that patriarchal um recreation and rewriting of history on the back of that i just wanted to ask you another question Monira. um initially when we got in touch with you for the second edition of glad um you were involved um uh, we initially discussed um that we would have a montage of, 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 of extracts from a series of your work over the years. And uh, however, recently um, you made the decision to, to actually just show Sitara how the stars. And I just wondered why, if you could explain to us a little bit uh, and the audience, um, why you made that decision. Yeah, actually, and um, we made that decision in the very last minutes and that was actually hard for me to make it. Uh, while I did want to show the works of these brave young girls and boys that I've had the privilege to work with in Afghanistan, at the same time, I realized the risk and dangers it may bring to their life. They have been part of my family and of course they will remain so, therefore their security and safety is my priority, especially in, 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 at this time where with such a political climate we inhabit now when we can't distinguish between the government, ISIS and Taliban, when the Taliban actually are expanding again their empire um, in this peace negotiation, which is the ultimate political solution by the Western democratic capitalism. So in, um, as in 2001, uh, Afghanistan was named the most dangerous country to be a woman. I'm afraid now after 20, years when we have arrived to such an escapable political impasse that is still a reality for many women 
who are either socially, culturally, or politically engaged and active or not. So, and since the core of uh, most of my work, or I can say all of my work are about women, women narrative stories and experiences of war and violence, it can easily be misinterpreted by people who cannot see and uh, cannot accept the call of art for political change. Therefore, as much as it pained me not to show these works, but the thought that they can attend their social and professional life, even if we can call it in a normal manner in the situation that is going on in Afghanistan, that also comforts me. And I've, and I've always said in my speech, previous work or seminars that my students, my colleagues, they, they have been the backbone of, uh, backbone of my works. And I am proud of them. And I have talked about their courage, bravery, creativity, and fight for a brighter and better future. And I can do that um, whenever I want, but putting these videos in the internet, I realized that it can bring a huge risk to the life, which I was not accepting to do that. So that was the reason that I took it down. But I hope that one day there is, we can get this chance and opportunity to see these works because these girls, um, which, uh, I had, uh, yeah, I have been working with. They are not only fighters, uh, um, and also they are somehow the one who really felt the the pain, the re the deep roots of our social and uh, issues and problems, and they were not afraid to to address them. So. I, due to lots of respect I have for them, I took down this, this video or this uh, best opportunity to show their works. But I hope there is, a, there is another chance in the future. And, um, and maybe in that day, it, uh, their artistic work hopefully will not bring any danger to them. So until that day, I will wait. And uh, hopefully that, that the time comes soon. Thank you, Monira. I would I would like to add to that that I don't think it's in any shape or form a compromise. I mean, Sitaraha is a a, a really staggering piece of work, uh, and beautifully you. and beautifully sincere. I'd also like to point out, at least from my knowledge of the situation you've worked in and like what you've shared with me, that this highlights the fact that political theatre. I think the fact that you the the it's a, it was a political act of you showing your work. And that the potential work of um, you showing work that involved other people that find themselves in more dangerous or vulnerable positions in Afghanistan at the moment, I think that is like hard evidence that political theater is still a necessary tool that can that can threaten the status quo and that actually it's 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 beautifully inspiring to hear um, and this is why we're really honored to have you um, here tonight mm -hmm. that um, the simple act, not the simple act, but the very sincere um, act of having, uh, of telling testimonies and stories throughout history of people that have been oppressed and have been subjected to series of normalized and institutionalized violences is a political act in itself. Uh, very often in GLAD, um, in series one and two, we've had discussions of whether like, what is the role of political theatre today? And of course, it always depends on the content, but like for those <laughs> um, who may be jaded by the power of, 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 of political theatre, this is a, a, an incredible example of actually how political theatre can be and still is a very necessary, powerful tool to, to challenge uh, violence. Um, and so thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. On the back of that, I would like to then uh, move my next question to um, both, I'll start with you, Monera, as I've, um, and then move on to you, Asad, before we go on. Monera, you were, you were first involved, you were involved in the first ever production made and produced by Women in Afghanistan, which to me, and I'm sure to everyone else, is a historical and monumental moment, you know. Um, and I was wondering whether we could start with you, Monera, if you could tell us a little bit about um, your experience in Afghanistan and what made you move to Sweden. Um, yeah, a little bit about that, if we could start with that, please. Um, yeah, actually, that was in 2006 when the first educational theater festival was held in, in Herat, west of Afghanistan. And my play, uh, Cry of History, actually was not 
the only production which was produced entirely by women that year, there were 10 other uh, groups of girls from different uh, schools attended to that festival. But, I, but my group actually was the only which nominated to perform for a mixed audience while the rest of the festival was divided into uh, girls or women production for female audience and men production for men audience, uh, for, for a mixed audience. So by that time in 2006, I had already started my career as actor and I had directed some uh, short films, but that was Cry of History was my first try of writing and directing a play. And somehow it was, it was then when I realized that the effect theater can have on its audience. So I decided to start the theater department within the company Simor Film. And I think I was among the few lucky girls who had the privilege and support of the family, mainly my mother and my siblings. And I did not know at that time if I was going to do political theater, but I was, as I was born into a very religious and traditional family, I also lived the injustice and inequalities, uh, both as a woman, and a refugee living in Iran and Pakistan. And I think it was my, my witness of a women's situation, not only those women who were around me, but also the subjugation of women in, in our patriarchal society, which drove me towards political theater. And um, since then I was focusing on um, creating female-led and female-fronted productions uh, with, with the hope to create a feminine, a woman narrative in a country which has been in decades of war and violence, but still we do not see the slightest footprint of woman narrative. So through my work, I somehow came to understand the importance of narrative, the importance of telling, which we as individual, either women or men, could use it as a basic structure for knowing our, ourself and our action, where um, narrative could act as a mean of constructing the, a kind of our sense of self. So the goal with my political works was always to demonstrate the relationship between the society's ideology and of course their action, but it also was a confrontation to our system and. Uh, and society that how we as individual or groups oppress one another and restrict one another from living fully. And since the core of my uh, plays was to expose the social problems, domestic violence and, and the roots of these issues, which I do believe lies within the religious texts and books, of course, it, it shocked the patriarchal system which um, have always defined women's and women's body and socio-political participation within a specific frame. And unfortunately, we, I mean, we, the Afghan people, we are not used uh, to hear from women. We are not used to hear about women's stories and experiences so naked so frank without being polished by this uh, cultural religious justification and this their fine language. And no matter how one tries, the eye has no story of its own that is not also the story of a relation or set of relation to, or to a set of norms as um, Judith Butler puts it. So my, approach to women's narrative and stories was perceived as playing with fire, just, just because I was, as a woman, I took the courage to question the very institution causing uh, women's suffering. And, and that was what brought me here to Sweden to exile, but also coming to exile uh, gave me a, a stronger voice. So, Though I uh, somehow get really sad when I think, um, or when I, um, in the beginning when I 
came to accept that I had to leave finally. I can't stay. Either it's a risk to me, to my family, or to my students, just because I cannot silence myself um, towards what I see in the society. So that was, I made this hard decision to come to Sweden, but somehow I am now I'm happy and I'm grateful for the opportunities that I have been given here. Um, this is the first time that I, when I did Sitar Holy Stars, that I was writing without censoring myself. I was performing without censoring myself. So somehow it was hard, but then you need to, you need to choose. And I chose exile, but also at the same time to be able to talk and to tell. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you so much. Um, Asad, um, I'd like to direct a very similar question to you about your uh, experience in Afghanistan and your, your journey to move to Sweden um, and the, the differences in the context of which you still work. Uh, actually, Afghanistan is a very strange country, not for, uh, just for Afghan citizen, for all people they are going in that country. <laughs> so it's, it's the, maybe the capital of international violence in today and also the symbol of absurdity, international politic absurdity also. So when I was in Afghanistan because my educational background is related to studying Islam, I studied theology in Qum and then in, in the most religious city in Iran. So I was a mullah. And then I uh, also studied sociology in, in Tehran University and work in collective memory. So my work was the combination of theology and sociology. So when I returned back to the Kabul, so the question was, how to understand this city. So everybody, Munira told something about that as individual, we have to narrate or to express. So uh, I do believe that it's difficult to talk about individual and individuality in country like Afghanistan. So maybe there is no individual. So because this character is very modern, but even as individual, we express ourselves in the historical framework or maybe refigure the history in our talking and or discussion. So as so my work was the combination of uh, theology and sociology. So I I my question was uh, what's the relationship between theology and the destroying of Kabul. So, or maybe is it the Islamic theology is constructive theology or destructive? So talking about that was so where it has very cost, everybody knows about that. So, and then uh, like millions, millions people, uh, I became 